Hello. Hello. Hi, Ali. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, Ali, how you doing? I'm I'm doing well. I'm actually here in uh, Helsinki, uh, in the middle of this uh, conference, business conference. Okay. So I I had to find this kind of a semi quiet spot here. I hope it's not like a sound back background noise is not like too disturbing. Yeah. So, um, Ali, could, could we start with maybe just an overview in terms of like you know who you guys are, your company, and then like you know in, in, any if we can see a demo of the product or anything that you guys have, it'd be great. Sure. So uh, we are a mobile game studio uh, focusing on uh, combining mobile games and the scientific topics. So uh, that we started as like uh, uh, focusing on educational game. So, uh, but then a couple of years ago, we took a new direction. Uh, we were actually contacted by Pfizer, one of the biggest uh, biggest. Uh, uh, pharmaceutical companies and and they had big problem related on you know vaccine vaccine awareness okay and uh, they were thinking that games are already so big media then they can reach out the younger po population and, and and nowadays even older population in a massive way and they they, they had this hypothesis that games games will be so big uh, in communicating different kind of health issues that, uh, that, uh, that they want to be kind of a forerunner in that. And they had spotted our game production Antidote, which is about, uh, uh, which is a game where a player is controlling human defense system, like a different kind of white cells and, and T cells and B cells and defending the immune system against bacteria and viruses and so on. And they thought that the game production would be a perfect game to explain how vaccines work. So basically the immu immunology behind vaccines, because uh, uh, many people who are against vaccines, they don't understand, uh, I don't understand how vaccines work and, uh, and uh, games are interactive way to explain the interactions of, of human body. So that's, that's how, how we started to look at the, that, that kind of a new market. And, and we realized that not many game uh, companies were operating there. Yeah. Uh, so it, it took a long time uh, to open the right doors in that, that industry. Uh, convinced the right, right people uh, to, join, to join the kind of, uh, uh, join the vision and, and, and we have succeeded very well. So we have had some uh, game industry veterans to join us like Peter Westerbacher who, who was building the Angry Birds brand. Okay, and, uh, and then uh, some guys who with the two, two tens of years of experience in pharmaceutical industry, and they have seen like how the healthcare industry is, uh, how, how the digital marketing is working. How do they tell about uh, important topics such, uh, such as like vaccines or, or diabetes? Or, or cancer or so on. And they thought that the pharmaceutical industry is under digital disruption and we are kind of uh, doing something new in that, that frontier. So, so that's kind of our background. And uh, currently we are building the second pilot here in Finland with GlaxoSmithKline, which is the world's uh, leading vaccine producer. Okay. And we are kind of testing that, how our game production and how how the, the campaign which is related on the game production how does it compare uh, in the marketing effic efficacy uh, compared to their like uh, global marketing campaign and if we can prove that the uh, game can be a big game game can be more efficient in the health communication than their global marketing campaign it's a big thing because obviously they want to scale it globally immediately and then we are negotiating with the seven out of ten top pharmaceutical companies in the world and also with the public and private sector. So so it's like we have interesting times what we are doing and uh, basically that's, that's, that's what we're doing. Okay, do you have anything you can show us in terms of, uh, is there, can you screen share a demo? Or yes. yes, sure. So uh, one moment, I have trailer here open. Great. So yeah. uh, 
to share, you just click on the middle button at the bottom of your screen. Share the green yeah. button. Oh, 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 sorry. I didn't stretch it. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay, you can see it now. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I watched some of this last night. This is cool. So I, I pause it here just to explain what, what this game is about. So it's a casual strategy tower defense game. Uh, here is your stem cell. Uh, here comes waves of bacteria, viruses, toxins, and so on. And then you are building these different kind of uh, cells here, and all of these cells has been model scientific. So player is guided guided to build, uh, for example, white cells. He's guided to build here T cells and B cells, and one by one uh, layer. The game explains what is the role of different kind of cells in the immune system, and if right. toxins are coming, how they are working, and uh, how vaccines are part of the acquired immune system, and so on. So we believe that games are games, games can be a very fun way to explain those same interactions that you have in in immune system, and uh, and uh, our approach in kind of educational game is that uh, I'm not a big fan of traditional educational games where education comes first and actually the when it's too educational it means that it uh, it's not fun to play anymore so we believe that the game has to be much with entertainment values with the best uh, tower defense games and then at the same time it has to still deliver the message that you are trying to deliver so that's kind of the uh, basic concept, but I, I, I uh, let the trailer uh, go now. So, but please ask any questions if you have afterwards. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, any questions about the gameplay, uh, characters, or, or whatever? Just what's what's the objective? Is the objective more to, to get as many players as possible for marketing, or are you actually trying to monetize? Uh, yeah, that's that's a good question. So, uh, I changed the slide here. So, we are not currently uh, monetizing the game at all. So, I open this kind of slide here that should, in order to just like to show the bigger. Uh, bigger picture what we what we are doing here so you could think that our game is a marketing education and sales platform and it means that uh, here is like education part you play the game you spend in the game on average like 20 minutes in an interactive session learning about how immune system is uh, is working then we have creative campaigns which are related on the risk of not being vaccinated and the viruses, which are kind of the characters of our game. So I will show you in, a, in one moment the, the, the advertisement, but now we are running test campaigns in Finland in different social media channels, and we are measuring uh, how much more efficient this kind of uh, animated game-related marketing in, is related on the other uh, marketing campaigns that those uh, the vaccine producers are running. And so the final goal is that people see the marketing, uh, vaccine related marketing trailers in social media, TV, or something. Part of the people go and download the game, spend tens of minutes understanding how vaccines work, and eventually part of those people go and take, take vaccines. It can be related on travel vaccines or it can be related on. Uh, HPV, or it can be related on maybe in some public mandatory uh, va vaccinations. But uh, I, I show you the other video, which is about the kind of the marketing trailer, which is related on the game. Uh, one more. Oh, no. Oh no, <laughs> he's got him. Wait a second. 
sure. Oh, he's healthy. Oh, he's got to carry him. <laughs> oh, damn. That's good. Okay, so you got the idea. So, yeah. so basically, this is related on travel vaccinations. And what you can do when you go to holiday, in holiday, you can he get hepatitis A or hepatitis B. So uh, we have been trying to combine in a creative way the game characters, which is kind of the hepatitis, uh, game characters uh, to the uh, to the like holiday setting. If you go to holiday, you are carrying this uh, character, which happens to be the hepatitis from our game. And then you have this happy happy couple here, and the girl is asking that, could you carry me like this? For the uh, for the rest of the vacation, and the hepatitis is then asking that could you carry me like this for the rest of your life, and that's <laughs> related on the risk that if you get hepatitis, it can actually you can actually have that for the rest of your life, and then, right. so so basically, and then then we are measuring that some people we have two call to actions, one one is directly. To the game, they download the game and play the game. And one is is to uh, this uh, uh, this uh, one moment I show you. One is to this uh, uh, vaccine information page, which okay. is again branded with our game characters and explaining how what are the risks of uh, hepatitis, what are the risks of hepatitis A and B, and so on. Cool. So we are kind of a continuing the the, the visual graphical style from the social media marketing or TV marketing to the game and to the uh, like a decision to make the vaccine purchase. So not like a traditional, it's a long answer to your question, but no, we are not monetizing at the moment uh, the end user. We are monetizing the, the healthcare industry who's spending uh, billions for uh, different kind of uh, like vaccine uh, awareness and different kind of disease awareness and so on. Got it. So how are you guys measuring success or how will GSK or, you know, maybe the uh, pharmaceutical companies funding the, the game project, Yeah. how are they evaluating you guys? Is it is it play yeah. time? Is it number of downloads? Is it... Yes. Uh, uh, good, good question. So, so now we are in the second pilot. We are measuring the kind of efficacy of this part here. So okay. we are we have uh, cost per click, for example, cost per click compared to their global campaign cost per click. We have click through rate, uh, click through rate to their uh, vaccine information page, and okay. then we have obviously cost per install. And how expensive it is to install the game, and yeah. eventually we want to be showing that person who downloads the game plays the, plays the game for 20 minutes or something and gets the interactive experience and beats the hepatitis with the help of vaccination the purchase of vaccination is going to be tens of times like a bigger than in a traditional way and we know those numbers and they are not very very like big numbers that how what is the like percentage of the traditional people that they uh, convert to like vaccine uh, pr pr uh, vaccine buyer. So this is kind of the big thing if we can show that by playing the game you get the coupon or you uh, you get the digital code and then you go to clinic and we can track and measure where why did the, the person make the vaccine uh, decision buying decision. Okay. So, uh, Do, yeah. Just to understand, so you're tracking that last part from education to sales by giving them a code, and so uh, the, we, are, we are not doing it at the moment. So okay. we are just like trying to find the ways uh, how to do it. And but but in traditional in in pharmaceutical like uh, uh, advertisement, if, if if they have like TV campaign or something, in TV campaign they have a like number. But if you want to get this call to this number. And yeah. then they have some kind of a little bit different, uh, you know, different number in each campaign so that they can track, or, track that yeah. do the customer come from television or social media or radio or something, something else. So we are trying to find the same kind of model here. Right. Or you can you just use a QR code, right? I mean, I think there's... Yes, 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 exactly. Yes, yes, exactly. Well, so what, what's the primary issue that you guys are running against where, where you know, Paul and I could potentially try to try to help what is there a specific aspect? 
well, uh, uh, when building a startup, it's it's uh, always about uh, lack of resources and lack of resources. So, okay. uh, so uh, again, like we have been raising a uh, total like 1.2 million funding, and now we are raising again money and, 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 and investors are saying, okay, we want to see the results because it's, they are so close and stuff like that. So, so it's like eternal balance between like uh, solving some kind of problem and showing, showing enough results so far so that you can convince the investors with the, like reasonable terms so that you can get more money in, in the company. So I think that's the biggest problem now. And, and, and that's why we are like, uh, uh, that's why I'm in this investor conference again, having investor meetings so that, uh, uh, that, 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 that we can uh, get investors who first of all understand games or they understand pharmaceutical industry uh that, that's the kind of the best thing and uh and but that's our like the biggest biggest challenge that we are trying to find uh, uh more funding got it and it seems like the the maybe the part that you guys should be working on the most is the message with respect to how effective this method method is in terms of you know um causing a, a conversion to vaccine purchase and to other methods so yes. And, and I mean, I, I think you can get pretty close. You guys are pretty close to showing what that number is. Although yes. I, I, I don't know if, so is there a benchmark right now in terms of the current industry benchmark without using this methodology? Uh, we have some kind of numbers. So we know that from example, from those uh, traditional vaccine information side, the conversion is it's really cool. Uh, so I'm I'm optimistic that we could have even like tens of times better conversion from the game, and we can actually track and show the results. So if you think about, for example, travel vaccines, it's like you take three, three shots, and then it's your lifetime. And each of those shots uh, cost a little bit under under like hundred hundred dollars. So it's three hundred dollars total. If we can show that we have like okay, the cost per install, that's something. But if we can show that then the conversion to exact vaccine sales uh, purchase is like tens of times better, then, then we are onto something and we can, this kind of method can actually like revolutionize the, 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 the healthcare uh, communication. So, so I, I think it's like interesting. I guess the tricky part is if, if, if people are punching up a code, then are the places that sell the, you know, are the doctor's offices, are they, the infrastructure there for them to accept code, whether it's just a number or a QR code. Yes, yes, yeah. That, that that's that's good question as well. So, so what you just like described is that that uh, clinics are actually also part of this value chain. So, so yeah. this is like uh, okay, information campaigns are run by the vaccine producers, and in maybe some countries, it can, those can be run by. Uh, by, by clinics, but usually vaccine producers, and then people go to information uh, like the web pages, and then they go to clinics, and clinics get obviously they benefit as well when people come to vaccinate, and and uh, and uh, yes, so they are part of the value chain, and if we have good incentive for them to give. Uh, like uh, to make the te technological changes so that they can read the QR code, which is not like, uh, which shouldn't be a big thing. They are also going to be uh, benefactors there. So that's always always something that we have to take into account when we are kind of building this kind of a new, uh, new ecosystem. Yeah, I, I think that's the tricky part is, you know, whether you can convince, convince investors that not only what, I mean, because now you're asking for two, two miracles, right? One is that you, you create a great product that a lot of people are going to use. And then secondly, that, um, and, and it's kind of dependent on the first, that uh, the, the the distribution infrastructure in terms of the codes and stuff like that, they're all going to adopt that. Maybe you can solve that just by also creating a, an app that accepts those codes but you, yep. you might you might have to you know work on the full you know value yes. chain and, and, and the full yeah. and delivery system yeah yeah very very good point very good point and uh, uh to be honest we haven't put in this final section like yet too much uh attention because uh, we have enough work in kind of approving the 
uh, first yeah. set standards here, but, but it's good at this point. We have to take into account all of those those right. those and, and, I can, yeah. and because like to so to get down to the full like uh you know to, to really measure what it costs to create a vaccine purchase conversion without that infrastructure it's gonna be difficult. My recommendation would yes. be to create something like some some form of proxy to that. Yes. Where, you know, in, in the game, it's like, okay, are you interested in a vaccine? Uh, get get a code. Like, they press the button, and then, you know, they put in their email, and then their email some information about where and how they can buy a vaccine. Yes, I mean, yes. Knowing that, that conversion step, it's, it's not – to get to that actual purchase is, is going to require so much infrastructure and so forth that – at least show investors, well, look, these people clicked on, yes, I'm interested in, in, in purchasing a vaccine. And they put in their email, and then they're sent something, and then you, you can model some reasonable loss or whatever to, to the actual purchase. But at least you're a lot closer in terms of being... Yeah, that's I, I think it's a very, very, very uh, clever thought. So, so uh, uh, yeah. Two good points, good points. People would like to give in an earlier phase the value proposition or estimate to the investor about uh, about the exact number. Yes, very good. What, what are you currently seeing from like <laughs> advertising now from a CPI or uh, IP perspective? Like the front end metrics for how yes. coming into, into the game. Yeah, good point. In, in Finland, we, our CPI, CPI has been like. Uh, it has been, I think, forty-six cents or something like that. It has okay. been uh, variated a bit, and then we have been testing in India. Obviously, it's much, much cheaper there, like so six cents or something like that. Uh, in Canada, it's a little bit more than in Finland, but uh, uh, but uh, but uh, I think it's but like still less than fifty cents. Uh, and uh, but but now in in Finland with this GlaxoSmith line, we are. Those numbers are from uh, like the Google marketing. Now we are focusing on Facebook uh, and Instagram marketing. So the numbers are going to change, but we don't have those yet because the campaign is just about to start in this this week or something like that. So yeah. we are waiting those numbers. Right. And so then the next question is like um, one. So we, we talked about the point, you, you know, because you don't have like the, the infrastructure and stuff, like maybe you have create a proxy, which is the step from education to sales. But then now in terms of like the education part, you know, how, how good is it? Can you, can you yeah. talk about retention? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Very good question, and that, that actually leads us to our next slide. So it's kind of a scientific validation. So so typically when you're making a game, you don't need to make any scientific validation that is it a good game. But what you ask is basically the thing that we have to be able to show. If you're in a like, uh, uh, healthcare industry, you have to be able to show that how, uh, what is the impact of the education part. So now we are preparing here in Finland, uh, it's a unique pilot study uh, run uh, together with the uh, Institute of Health and Welfare of Finland. So basically that's like governmental institution who is making all the like the vaccine recommendation and health recommendations and everything. So they are building a pilot and test our game production in 30 pilot schools. Okay. And the idea is that uh, we are testing the game production to target group of nine from nine to 14 years old and we are informing them about the hpv vaccination so hpv is human papilloma virus and human papilloma virus is causing cancer for girls but now this uh there's a, like scientific evidence that human that this uh uh those vaccinations to boys, they prevent the, the, the infections uh, dramatically and they prevent the like cancer cases dramatically because boys are the ones who are spreading the, the, the virus. So now the government, so this uh, uh, Institute of uh, Health and Welfare, they have started to recommend those vaccinations also for boys in Finland. Now, 
Now they want to be testing in those pilot schools. They have two groups, like a control group and then the group that will be informed about HPV vaccination with our game production. And then we can have like, a, we have like a two groups and we can really measure and uh, see that what is the like effect on behavioral attitudes and understanding related on vaccines. When you, and, and we can compare the like uh, teaching methods. So that, that, that's the thing that how we come to the scientific validation that how effective is actually this kind of education compared to traditional. Uh, like uh, educational, uh, traditional educational methods. So that's the thing that we are we are trying to prove as well. Right. Yeah. I, I guess what I, um, my only point there would be like it's, it's hard for us. Like we, we, we're we're seeing the videos of the gameplay. It looks pretty cool. And you know, tower yep. defense is actually a very sticky category. So in in terms yep. of like, the category of game that you picked, it's it's probably a good one. Yes. But then I, I guess a question would be, you know, from a gameplay perspective, you know, um, are, are, you, are you guys tracking the right numbers so that, you know, you guys can have a better understanding of whether, okay, you know, maybe the game is good enough, maybe it's not, um, you know, uh, so like in terms of like what you guys do in terms of optimizing the gameplay, the 2E, uh, the level balancing, like, are you guys doing the, the things you guys need to do to make sure that the gameplay is strong enough so that you're drawing in the players every day a lot so that they can, you know, get the educational piece that you guys are trying to deliver? Yeah, it's a, that's like a good question. And I, I, I could describe it in this way, but okay, you know how difficult it is to make a great game. It's very, yeah, uh, 100%. Difficult. Yeah. Yeah, and you know that it's even more difficult to make a free-to-play game because you need all of those testing iteration and, and find the right balance between the monetization and then the fun gameplay and, and, and everything. But if you think that there's one more like element, it's a scientific element. It means that all the characters need to be scientifically modeled so that they behave in the game. Yeah. Just like they behave in the real, real body or they are modeled like accurately enough in the game yeah. so that it can deliver some kind of education content. It makes yeah. it like even more difficult. Yeah, like, it's like working with IP, trust me. I, I yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yes. So, so, so we don't, obviously we have our like own testing uh, testing system that where, where we can track the like basic method, like a metric with like about retention or something like that. Yeah. But, even if we can make the retention very like high and the game okay players come to the game or they spend a lot of time in the game that's not the only thing because then we have to be tracking, tracking that how do they really learn something from the game yeah, and it's yeah. an internal balance if you make it like more like educational you can get it like you can you can make the retention smaller if you make the retention bigger and use more like a game elements you can make the educational part like uh, uh, less effective so, so can, uh, can, you, can you talk about that part so how are you integrating the educational piece around uh, vaccines and anecdotes yeah. into the game is it like yes. narrative based you guys have yeah. to talk in between or yeah it's like narrative based yeah, good, 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 good thing. We have a narrative. The game starts now with the kind of uh, introduction comic, which is related on vaccines. The player is uh, kind of making the vaccines in the laboratory. But I, I could show one comic, which kind of sure, explains. Yeah. yeah, so one moment I check here. The... Okay, here. So. This is a kind of a basic comic which kind of explains how how we, for example, tell that how vaccines are work. So this is one character from our gameplay. It's a B cell, and B cell is firing antibodies to the bacteria. Okay. And uh, by doing so, it makes makes those bacteria less dangerous. And you can see you get the like heart eye eye there, and they look a little bit less le less dangerous. And when the B cell has been firing antibodies to the bacteria means that white cells can be recognizing them e like more easily. And, uh, and that's how basically uh, th this kind of a system system works. And and uh, what, what the problem is that B cell has to be studying all the pathogens that come to the immune system. So different kind of bacteria, viruses and so on. And if there's infection, 
there comes lots of bacteria, they come through your defenses and they can hurt your stem cells or immune system. But what vaccines do, they help B cell to learn faster so that B cell can fire antibodies faster so that white cells can eat those uh, pathogens faster. So that's basically the interaction and the mechanism of vaccines are actually working in human body. And this is my like a empirical study that not even adults understand that how, how vaccines are actually working. So this, this, this has been like a good material also for not only kids or teens, but also for parents, uh, because these are quite abstract concepts. If you explain people that uh, what is your T cell and B cell and what are the interactions, uh, you, it requires kind, kind of a sophisticated understanding of the, those scientific terms yes. that you really understand how they're working. So this is kind of a really new way, uh, like maybe more appealing and more down to earth way to explain those uh, difficult concepts. So I, I think that, but I, I hope I like answered uh, the question. That's how we try to build uh, the education inside of the, the game. Okay, and then how did you guys uh, decide upon tower defense as a core gameplay to kind of deliver this education about vaccine? Why this relative to you know maybe like a hyper casual or more idle type uh, game or something like that? Uh... To be honest, I don't remember how we came to the conclusion uh, to like uh, to beat that element. I I I I read myself. I have been reading uh, chemistry, physics, and molecular biology and stuff like that. So I understood the interactions of the human uh, like uh, uh, elements. I I had liked some tower defense games, uh, so those were kind of good reference points. But uh, I don't remember how we came to the like conclusion that tower defense might be a good good way to start. And we have been thinking also that could we find like some kind of a more casual casual like approach to the bigger audience, which we could deliver the message uh, uh, in a powerful way. And we have actually some 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 ideas, uh, but but uh, which we are going to try if we can show that like this kind of a concept works so right. obviously we are scaling to like a little, little bit different audiences after that and we are also scaling to different therapy areas yeah so my my advice on that front like if, if you are able to make uh additional product is, is to like this time because you guys are fundamentally a, a marketing company it, you know to, to some degree right and, and yes, this, yes 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 you know, you're not trying to monetize, you're trying to get this product out as, as much as possible. And so I think you guys have to start thinking more like a marketing company in the sense that, you know, the, the, the actual gameplay that you guys deliver has to be something that, that delivers on, it, that's associated with this educational piece. And so, you know, my recommendation would be, you know, like whatever the game is. So let's say it's like a snake.io idle, you know, or hyper casual game or some other games. Or maybe it's it's some kind of idle game where you know you're just like releasing a bu bunch of uh, viruses and then you know you, you're trying to like kill somebody or whatever it is like the three four five different concepts uh, you guys should really be doing like a Facebook ad test right it's just yes. you're basically like creating the, these different creatives around okay here's the hyper casual version here's the idle game version here's the, and then there's maybe two yes. or three different types of uh, hyper casual games and when you put it out there to to measure okay what what is our ipm installs per milli or installs yes, per thousand yes, yeah. um what kind of click-through rates are we getting what kind of cpi are we getting and then like I, I think it's good to have the the current game as a base and then you could also test that conversion piece by saying you know uh are you interested in in getting a vaccine yes enter the email you know like you can use the current game for that but then to also say, okay, and talking to your investors, hey, here's four or five different ideas. We've tested them, and we know what the front-end metrics for that are going to look yeah. like. And then that can also help direct your, you know, because you're going to have limited resources. So, like, what kind of game should we make? Like, even before you work on the game, to know that players actually, oh, this is the kind of game that players want. Yes, very, very, very good points. And, and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Were you saying something? No. Oh, I'd say the character go, go development ahead. for this tower defense. 
uh, the character development with this tower defense game is um is valuable uh, you know tower defense is like, super hard to it's not a it's not a very easy genre uh, to work to work in but you know i think you guys do like how joseph mentioned that this is practically like an ip and um you're saying that like, characters have to be modeled like realistically after this you know this this true scientific part of like each character so in some ways, I think it lends like an easier hand to your character because you kind of already know what it's supposed to do, but it's also limiting. So yes. in that way, so in that way, I, but so I, but because you're working this tower defense, I think that it's actually helping you flush out a lot of your characters. And I would probably pick like some topics I'd want to teach about and then fabricate and exaggerate in other areas. But I would I would be careful about sticking so hard to the IP in some cases because it's not like it's like the Lion King or mm. like the you know what I'm saying or like a, you know Walt Disney movie. Yep. But I, I but I I don't think that you I don't I don't think that the tower defense was a bad move. I personally yep. I think that yep. it's, I think that it really developed out a lot of your thinking, and perhaps you know most of the time when I'm building games with companies, well, I always try to see what the technology will lend a hand to next. So, like knowing like what kind of technology you built with this with this particular product, and what yeah. it could lend, what could it what could it lend hand to for other products would be a would be a fun brainstorm. Like for yeah. example, if you built a a game that had real time uh, go karts, that could lend to like a real time jumper or like um, some other technology in the same in a similar genre especially since you can reuse characters for each game yes. Yes. you can possibly you, you can possibly build um you know a whole string of things using the same exact characters so I, I think from a game design standpoint from like building the game i'd be interested to see like what is it about the game like what what is it about the technology that's special that could lend hands to other things and then like a big list of uh the the, the current ip and how those could turn into other things because obviously you don't want to make a hyper casual game just to make a hyper casual game you also want it to be true to the ip so i'm curious about a some kind of brainstorming around the current technology how that could lend hands to other things or you know, just the the overall performance in the current tower defense is interesting to me. I used to really love a game called Sentinel. Have you heard of Sentinel? It's uh, a, it's no. Sentinel. It's a really it's a it's a really really intense tower defense game that I played forever, and um, I don't even remember what the IP really was. Kind of alienish. Yeah, it's a really but, but, Yeah, but some of the tower defense games that I've played that I really liked, the IP didn't even matter. I was just like, oh my god, this is insane. Yeah. So I don't, I, th I don't think that the IP is a make or break. I don't think the yeah. storyline is a make or break. And I do think good gameplay would be always super cool. So I'm interested. Yeah. I'm interested in checking it out and um, seeing how we could, you know, yeah. see seeing how we can improve that particular game or lend that technology to other things that are easier, yeah. faster, like Joseph's talking about. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very, very, very good thinking and and and, and reasoning and uh, something that we have been thinking that uh, if if we think about uh, the educational perspective a little bit more and and we think that okay we have now this tower defense game which is uh, around vaccines and immune system and so on we wish that if we would make the game for a little bit like uh, different audience let's say that we make like a super casual game. But if it's related on the vaccines or if it's related on the immune system, we would still like to keep the characters as the same. Yeah. And the reason for that is that uh, when players understand that, okay, certain kind of bacteria looks like that, he understands that that always looks like that, or stem cell, because then it also builds a narrative around the like, uh, uh, like uh, interactions of like human immune system that when you understand that, okay, stem cell is working like that, it looks like that, and then the white cell is looking like a little bit different. And in the next game, those, even though the gameplay is different, you understand that, oh, those interactions are actually exactly the same. So it, it, yeah, strength, yeah. it strengthens the educational like narrative of the game. And, uh, and like, for example, now we are talking about vaccines, but we have been uh, talking a lot about also about cancer. 
So there's a big uh, problem, for example, in children's hospitals when they try to. Okay, cancer is very serious topic, topic, but it's like a, a re reality of life, and sometimes you have to be informing ten-year-old kid about what's happening in his body when he has like he or she has leukemia. And the problem is that when you're trying to inform them about like, okay, what's happening in your body, and you tell them that okay, you're uh, you have this kind of a uh, thing in your your body and your immune system is uh, collapsing because we are giving you these antibiotics. Antibiotics, uh, like immune system is breaking down and then the bacteria and viruses are attacking there and then we have to give you the antibiotics and so on. So there's so much abstract language that they don't understand what's happening there. And when they don't understand, they are not committed, they are not like engaged in the treatments, or they are not motivated, or they even they like parents, they don't understand what's happening in, happening there. So uh, it's, it's vitally important that we we would be able to tell about those uh, uh, interactions in the human body in in like a, in like a easy easy and casual way, uh, and uh, it would mean that, like I say, that we hope that we can keep the characters. In a say, as a say, even though we change the like uh, gameplay or we say change the incentive, uh, like change the like theme from the vaccine to uh, uh, to the cancer or or diabetes or something you know, like something else. Oh, I have to plug my uh, uh, battery because I'm running out of the. Okay, so uh, Ali, what um. What, what's the best way that we can help you out? And so kind of like what I'm thinking, are that it seems like there's there's potentially three different areas that we can help you. Yeah. The, the first is uh, we, we talked about building in a um, in some kind of CTA to uh, to provide players or users with more information or to act as that proxy to give us an idea of what the ultimate conversion from, from gameplay to buying a vaccine would be like. And so... Yeah. We'd be happy to like try and design a, a, a CTA type of action in game for you. Uh, secondly, in terms of the gameplay itself, you know, I, I think, you know, pa Paul's a fantastic game designer. I think one of the things we can do is like, you know, uh, have Paul evaluate the gameplay, play the game, and then make recommendations from a gameplay perspective what, you know, he thinks that you guys should do to improve the game. And then, yeah. Like if you're trying to come up with a new game, then uh, we could help you uh, try and understand how you would run a you know quick and dirty market test. So like if let's say we come up with three, four, five different concepts with different art styles, then how to execute a Facebook ad test so that you can kind of see you know so so how to run it and then how to evaluate it to see you know what concept is the strongest and what are the specific metrics that you'd be looking for like. You know, CTR install rate or IPM. Yeah. Is that, sounds, is that a sounds good? Awesome. Sounds okay. really good. Really good. Great. Sounds really good. Okay. You no, know, um, more, than, more I, than good. When I'm usually when I've been in a company where somebody's come and evaluated the game, I was always like, oh my God, because I'd be a part of the game and I'd be like, who is this guy going to evaluate our game? But, um, I promise, you know, uh, one thing I can do is from a, from a position of like being in being in a position where somebody has evaluated my game and I felt weary about it. I kind of know what it's like. Sometimes people are paid to come in and be a big jerk and say a bunch of things that suck and then they leave and you're like, what was that all about? Um, so I'm definitely not going to be doing any of that. But um, I, I would basically try to look at your game like as if I was a part of your team. And just provide my feedback, even if you guys thought I was brilliant, mediocre, or whatever. But it would just be honest and yeah. um, based on just anything I felt. And I, I worked in some products. One that I worked in was an online gambling product, and it had a really, really big sign-up process. Because if you wanted to do online gambling, you literally had to give your first name, last name, address. Some, even social security number to some extent, just so you can participate in this experience. And this business did become profitable. Now, we were too large and they downsized, 
But at the time, I was like, man, this is kind of hard. I don't know who's going to go through this insane, insane process just yeah. so they can do this online gambling. But yeah. damn it, they are still going strong and people do it all the time. And I'm telling you what, you know, I never seen it. I never seen it. Uh, I never seen an intro so big and so in depth. I thought, who's going to give away their social security number to do this? This is insane. And we worked real hard and it worked. And uh, so I don't see why, you know, um, some kind of uh, some kind of a game that explains a big, difficult process and something that has like all these different hurdles put in work. You know, as you were talking, I, I kind of see I think I, I can see what you feel. I think you imagine your characters on flyers and on banners. And when people go get vaccines, they even recognize like the face and the characters of the of the immunity that they, that, that they need. And I was even imagining some kind of social element. Like you talk about a child understanding what cancer or what of these things are. I even wonder if people would be willing. I've been on a dating sites before where somebody who is actually has like a hepatitis and they'll talk about themselves like, hi, my name is Jessica, blah, blah, blah. And at the bottom, it'll say something I don't understand. And I, I remember I Googled it and I was like, oh, she's actually... Uh, like she has something or something like that. Like it would say like HPV or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So there's a community of people who actually share what they have and mm. they actually recognize that and they're trying to be like together with that, you know, and they have to be forward with who they are. And that's a very sensitive topic. Yes. But yes, I, yes. You know, it, and and this, and um, so I recognize the community around that as well. So I know that we're talking about kids and things like that, but at the same time, I was also thinking about uh, a more mature audience. And I wondered like about, you know, social features that could help the game just, you know, like, hey, you know, uh, here's this game. I, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I have leukemia or I have these, I have these things or I have hepatitis, you know, yeah. some people are actually open with, with talking about it. And um, yeah. You know, so I do see, I, I, I can't imagine in some cases that somebody would actually explain to them, their children, what's going on with the game, if it's good enough and accurate enough. And so the dialogue part, you know, I've been a huge, I've been hard, I've, I have been pretty hard on dialogue throughout my career because most of the time it slows the game down. I'm like, come on, guys, let's just get these guys in. So I'm going to have to, I, I think I'll, that's, that's one area that I might really look at. I think dialogue and free to play is a really hard mix. It's like trying to mix the book with, uh, you know, uh, a, a popsicle, right? It's just like yeah. this one is super, you know, like story heavy, and one is like really like let's just go. You got a kid on a phone and they're trying to play, and it's all these words and stuff. It's very very difficult. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'll have to get a get get a get a situation where I can play it, rec like record it on video, so I can scrub through it, look at certain areas. And but I think I hear you out. I think it's I think it's really interesting, and um, I'd love to take a look. And uh, yeah, see if I see if I can help you on your journey here. Yeah. So maybe what we could do is, um, you know, we're, we're come, kind of coming into a little bit of a busy period, but like maybe like the week after E three, so the week after next. If yep. we have a follow-up call, then we can go over those three things, right? And so, like, so so Paul can go over gameplay with you, and then I can go over, like, you know, a, a good uh, CTA to conversion proxy as well as, um, you know, how you would run that sort of Facebook ad test. Yeah. Okay. Sounds really good. Okay. So, sounds amazing. Great. Yeah. You, guys are, you guys are Android only, right? We have iOS as well, but... Uh, yeah. okay. Mostly, mostly Android users. Okay, cool. Yeah. That would be great. All right, sweet. I'll download your games and make a folder for it, and uh, we'll get started. When, whenever we schedule it, we'll, let's do it. Cool. Okay. Hey, amazing. Thank you for your time and, and uh, really, you. really good comments, and I really, really appreciate those. So looking okay. forward for the next uh, next session, and, and uh, don't be uh, like uh, sensitive with the feedback. I, th I think that we, you have to be embracing the reality. So whatever yeah. is the like opinion, that's like it. that's that's the way to do it. And and we all have to. We can all learn from the game perspective as a as a person. We can grow up. And and I, I face with the investors. I always ask them like direct feedback. Okay, if they say that okay, you have cool project, but I'm not gonna invest. So. 
maybe they are hiding something. Give it on and and give your like full feedback. So that's I, I think that's the way to go. So so then we can find right. the solution and make it better. Yes. Yeah. Good. All right. Hey. Great. Thank Thanks you very much. much. Thank you, Oli. Thank you, Nico. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it was nice to meet you. Bye now. Bye bye. Bye.